Hello everyone and welcome to another art lesson with me, Mr. Richardson. This activity is for my grade three students and we're going to be doing a two part activity. The first part is a guided drawing activity. So what you'll need for it is a piece of paper and a graylet pencil. The second part of the activity, which you can either do in one go or you can do it on the second week of visual arts, is a colouring activity. So for that you can use any colouring materials. I'm going to use watercolour paints. You might want to use acrylic, you can use texture, you can use coloured pencils. Anything that you've got available at home and it is your favourite art medium to use. Okay, so first of all, grab your paper and your pencil and let's get started. All right, so with your piece of paper, and it doesn't matter what size piece of paper it is, I'm using an A3 piece of paper, you probably won't have that at home. You'll have A4 printer paper, and that is completely okay. So use whatever you've got available, but I'm just doing this larger version because that's what I prefer. You'll need to put it in portrait orientation, so straight up and down, and with your grey lead, use light sketching strokes. So that means not having to press really hard, hold the pencil lightly, and you're just wanting to just do an approximate drawing. Remember mine is going to probably look a little bit different to yours, but I'm sure that you're going to recognize this cartoon character. So, first of all, sort of in the top third of the piece of paper, you're going to do an arc. So an arc is like a part of a circle, so just a little arc like that. And then on either side of the arc, you're going to do some diagonal lines. And then from each one, you're going to then draw it downwards, like so. It goes a little bit lower than that arc there, so probably a little bit lower. Okay. From there, you're going to start right on this bit here and I'm going to go almost to the middle and then it's a bump and then you're going to do another one. So another little arc, a little bump and an arc. And then from this corner, you're going to kind of curl around like this. And same on the other side. So there's a little hook on the end. Now this little bit here, you can copy that just under there so it looks a little bit like a bridge. And then from here, you're gonna go diagonally down. But make sure it's not a pointy corner because you need to round it off. So down and around to join there. And same on the other side. Diagonal and then around like that. From here, the bottom corner, you're then going to continue and just loop it around. And I'm sure you're already starting to work out what this is going to be. In the middle of this sort of diamond section here, you're going to put a capital T shape. So around, and then there's the T. And then from the bottom of the T, it's going to swoosh across like this. On the side here, you're going to put a little box. And from underneath this part here, so close to this left line here, you're just going to go straight down and same with the other side. Straight down here, notice that I've sort of gotten a little bit wider as I got down the bottom, but not much. Okay, so about here, so a little bit below the chin of what I'm sure you've now worked out is the cat. I'm going to draw a horizon line straight across. And then just above that, I'm going to add in this other line. So 
You've got two lines running here, which is going to form part of our landscape. So you've got the horizon line on the top one, and then just below is the water, which is just not long, uh, far below that. In this part here, which I'm sure you've worked out is sunglasses, you're going to then trace a border around inside that and repeat. And I'm going to add near the top here, right near the pointy corner of the ear here. I'm going to do a big swooshing line. So I start small and get bigger as it goes down further. You can probably rub that bit out where it crosses. that one and then here add some fronds to your palm tree and then there's a reflection in the sunglasses here of the beach so I'm going to draw the edge of the water, the horizon line there, so there's the sand and then the water there. And some dots where the cat's whiskers are going to be. And then you can add from the side And that is pretty much it. Have you worked out who it is yet? It is Pete the Cat. So Pete the Cat is at the beach. So it's sand, water and waves, and then sky. Let's go sunglasses on so the landscape's reflected in his sunglasses and with the palm tree there. And of course, if you want to add anything else, like you want to add a boat in the water, or you could add something on the beach, like a, an umbrella, a chair, some shells. I might add a shell here, because it's tropical. So that is stage one of your Peach the Cat activity. So stage two is, as I mentioned before, where you color it in. So it's completely up to you whether you want to do it all in one big go or whether you want to split it up into your two sections. So if you're going to be doing it in two sections, then you can make sure you put this in a safe spot for next time. If you're gonna color it in straight away, I'd love to see you do five star coloring or painting. So what that means is that you take your time, you have an eye for detail, so you try and stay within the lines. You use as many different colors as you can. That you are patient and need to take a break, then do so because it's a lot of space for you to colour in so you may get frustrated and want to just hurry and scribble or leave white gaps but the best thing to do is just take it in small chunks and that at the end that you want to be happy with what you have done so you look at the picture and go yep I am happy that I've done the absolute best as I possibly have can can do with colouring in this picture so that is my Pete the Cat picture and this is what it looks like after I have finished. And there is my finished Peach the Cat picture, all coloured in with watercolour paints. 
So as I mentioned before, it's completely up to you what you want to use to colorize your Peep the Cat picture. Colored pencils, textures, or a combination of both. If you've got paints at home, then you can go for that as well. Even if you've got oil pastels, have a play around and see what you might like to use. Remember, it could also be a mixed media piece. So you could block in the main colors with uh, paint or pencils. You could outline in texture. You could color in with watercolor paints and then go with over with marker. I went over with black um, watercolor paint for my outlines of Pete the Cat to make it stand out, make it look like a cartoon. I've got a special uh, thin brush here. It's called a liner brush and basically the bristles are a bit longer than what a normal fine brush is. So if you look at the difference, that's really short, about a centimetre or so. That's almost two centimetres long, nearly double the size. And that way you get these sweeping long lines. And you probably won't have one of those, but just something that you can learn about the different art. Um, equipment that um, you can get. So this is a liner brush to give you nice long lines. And then remember if you are using watercolor paint, remember you dip the brush in the water and pat the colors like you're patting the cat. So you don't want to scrub, just like you would pat Pete the cat. You wouldn't want to scrub the top of his head. He wouldn't be very happy. He's too cool for that. So you want to pat him nice and slow in one direction like that. Same with the brush. You're gonna pat in one direction with your wet brush. And the more times you pat, the more intense the color is going to be. So there's a few tips for you. Otherwise, if you want to color in the main part with your paints and then um, let it dry, and then you can go over your black marker for the outlines of Pete the Cat afterwards, that's okay. Um, but hey, the choice is yours. I'd love to see your page completely colored in. Now, another thing that you might want to experiment with too is intensity. So we're talking about the art element of value. So value is about how light or dark something is in between a shade and a tint. So shade is when you're adding black and it's getting darker, and a tint is when you're adding white and it's getting lighter. So for example, you can see that there's different shades here. I've used different uh, blues and I've um, feathered it out with a lighter color blue. And then because I've been using watercolor paint, all I did was just brush it with plain water towards the edge, particularly with these bits here, and it weakens the color and makes it lighter. So remember when I talked to you just a moment ago about the many uh, most times that you're patting that little color block of pigment, if you only pat it a few times, it'll give you a weaker color. So it'll give you nice light ones like that. Whereas if you pat it lots and lots, it'll give you darker things like that. So you can experiment with intensity. You can do that too with just colored pencils. So if you press hard, you would get a really dark, intense color of pigment from the pencil. Whereas if you shade it lightly, then you're going to get a lighter color because it's letting more of that white paper through. So you can experiment and see how you go with that. But with the sky, it usually starts off darker at the top and then fades out to a lighter color down there. And same with the water. The further away it is, darker and then becomes lighter once it comes towards the shore. And I've got, even got shadow on my palm tree here. So here is my finished Pete the Cat picture. So maybe there's two parts to this activity. One is the drawing part. The second one is the coloring part and outlining Pete the Cat himself. So break it up into two parts if you want to, or if you want to concentrate and do the whole thing all in one big session, that's okay too. But I recommend that you take it in uh, little chunks that you can manage. So if you feel like you've had enough, don't try and rush your picture, put it aside, and then come back to it again another time. And that way you'll be fresh minded and then you'll be ready to go for even more with your Pete the Cat picture. So pick what media you want to use with coloring your picture. And I can't wait to see all the results. Have fun with this activity and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.